Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, I'm working on this duotone beetle inspired armor for the Dung Beetle Knight from Kingdom Death. First was finding inspiration. I looked online using keywords like jewel beetle and metallic beetle or colorful beetle until I found a few options that I liked. When looking for an image to reference, I was careful not to choose a beetle that had a black highlight. Although I think that that's really interesting and would be fun to paint, I was worried that it would make it more difficult to read. And since this is a commission piece, I didn't want to risk it not reading correctly. So I was sure to choose options that had the classic white highlight instead of a black highlight. Once I found my inspiration, I created a digital mock-up using Procreate. Previously, I did a video on creating a digital mock-up, which will be available here. I highly recommend doing a digital mock-up for something like this, more so than I normally recommend doing a digital mock-up because creating a duotone effect and knowing exactly where to put the highlights and shadows is going to be less intuitive than it normally would be. And if I was going to experiment and make a mistake, I want to do it digitally, not on the miniature. I decided that the light for this miniature was going to be coming from the upper left and my highlights were going to be blue transitioning into this pinkish purple. Also take note that the white highlight on this beetle shell is very intense. There isn't nearly as much of a gradation as there normally would be. It's more of a color shift and then a sudden intense white. On to painting. I started out by doing xenophil highlights on this miniature, doing my highlights in the area and direction that I had previously sketched on my digital mock-up. The colors I'm using for this project are this mystery blue from Fantasy and Game, Amarth blue from Fantasy and Game, fluorescent magenta from Vallejo, pale violet red from Reaper, and fluorescent pink and white ink from Daler Rowney. Zenithal highlighting was a very important step in this miniature as the white base helped my brighter colors pop. After Zenithal highlights, I started by airbrushing on my mid-tones. I mixed my paint in cups so that I could slightly change the color variation later by adding new color to it. That way I didn't need to constantly be remixing the exact same color. I started with the pink and began with the darker mid-tone, spraying up from the bottom and carefully painting in the darkest areas of my gradation. Then I blended a more vibrant color over top, slightly from above. Be sure to use a light touch and moderation. Then I was on to the blue. For finer details, use a smaller needle, thinner paint, and a lower PSI, and remove the needle cover. Don't force your airbrush by pulling the lever the whole way back. If it seems like paint isn't coming out, troubleshoot on a piece of paper off to the side. You don't want to risk a mistake when you're painting something as delicate as this. When painting in the duotone highlights, remember the direction your light is coming from and position your airbrush at that same angle when applying paint to your miniature. I went a little overboard with my blue, so I went back in with a deep pink from below to intensify the shadows and bring some of the pink back that I had lost. Then it was on to hand painting in the highlights and shadows. I intensified the blue by using Armath Blue from Fantasy and Game, blending and intensifying the pink with hot pink ink. In areas where I thought the blue and pink transition was too stark, I mixed the hot pink and blue together, which created a purple and glazed in that area. I slowly built up the intensity using lighter and lighter shades of blue on his shoulder pads, the chest, and his thigh, following my original sketch and the zenithal highlights, making sure to keep the same 
sudden appearance of the white highlight. I found the best way to add my highlights was to mix new colors and completely paint over the scale rather than attempting to glaze up to a lighter color. To fill in the cracks and scales, I was worried that freehanding it would take too long. So I painted it over with a gloss coat and then I applied a black wash from Citadel over top. The theory is, is that the gloss forces the wash to more easily slide off of those larger smooth areas and pool in the recesses. I tested this out on his leg and was very happy with it. So I applied gloss to the rest of it and decided to do the same thing over all of it. Unfortunately, when I applied the black wash over the highlight areas, it really grayed down and desaturated those colors. Honestly, I should have seen it coming, but I really just didn't want to have to freehand in those lines. And so I just really wanted it to work. After this failure, I repainted in all of the scales, re-intensified that vibrancy, and then ended up hand painting in the cracks anyway. I took this as an opportunity to increase the contrast by adding more dramatic shadows and highlights. And lastly, increase the saturation I had lost with the pink airbrush paint from Vallejo. How did you know that this is where I wanted you? How did you know? Are you gonna let mama paint? Oh, you're getting cat, oh my God, cat fur everywhere. Oh, tough. Lastly, I looked at each scale as an individual element and added its own edge highlight to the top of the scale. I wanted to add more visual interest as well as add more intense contrast between the lighting that I had created as well as the scales. Overall, I'm very happy with it. Although not my easiest undertaking, I think that the pink and blue gradation made this a very unique miniature and a product my client will love. If you like what I do here and want to support me, you can subscribe down below, follow me on Instagram, or support me on Patreon. I recently just did a video where I critiqued your miniatures, gave you very specific feedback as well as digital mock-ups. If you're interested in receiving such feedback from me, you can support me on Patreon and I would love to help you improve your miniature painting. Otherwise, if you do your own beetle-inspired armor, I would love to see it. Please tag me on Instagram so I can see your work. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.